Hello and welcome to AW.1, the AW Women's Division blog. My name is Travis. You can read more of our articles at AW.1. Check me out on Twitter at AW underscore O-N-E. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. It makes us feel too sweet. So back in October of 2022, I made a video about why when the time comes, rather than AW instituting women's tag team titles, they should instead institute women's trios titles. And I'll just quickly summarize my five main arguments for this. Number one, exciting action is just baked into trios matches. One of the big elements of tag team matches is slowing things down, having the baby faces isolated away from their corner, cutting the ring in half, as FTR likes to say, so that you've got these long extended heat sequences building up to the hot tag. You can do that in trios matches as well, but more often than not, it's just a fast paced, high flying sprint, which I think benefits the women's division more. Number two, a women's trios division would instantly create stables, which subjectively, I believe provides the best and most interesting storytelling and booking. Number three, it gives more women more TV time, increasing the likeness of someone catching fire and becoming a bigger single star. Number four, it differentiates AW from WWE and NXT and Impact Wrestling, who all have women's tag team belts already in divisions that I think have sort of struggled with those titles. And number five, it allows wrestlers who must limit how they bump. So for example, Soraya with her neck, Thunder Rosa with her back. It allows these wrestlers to be obscured by the chaotic nature of these trios matches where they can sort of hide in plain sight, have these matches, but their physicality won't take anything away because someone else can take those bumps. But the argument that I wanna to make today is that a AW women's trios division will help develop their talent. No wrestling company in the world develops women wrestlers better and faster than stardom. Although I'll admit that a true Joshi fan would be quick to point out that how many wrestlers stardom poaches from other smaller Joshi promotions, but nevertheless. You may have heard Excalibur or Taz wax on about the intense training of Joshi wrestlers, and while yes, there's likely a lot you can credit to training technique, my hunch is that an even bigger factor is the sheer amount of matches these women put in. It's not uncommon for Stardom's wrestlers to have over 100 matches in a single year. Meanwhile, in AW, women will typically top out around 30 matches per year. Although thanks to Ring of Honor, some women, for example, Sky Blue, Athena, Will Nightingale, may well double that number in 2023. That being said, when you look at Mayo Iwatani, who is essentially the face of Stardom, when you look at her 106 matches in 2022, only 24 of them were singles one-on-one -on -one matches. Iwatani and the rest of the Stardom roster wrestle a ton of multi-win matches with six or more women in them. And in doing so, you fast track your newer, less experienced wrestlers by having them get hours of live match experience in front of crowds against everyone in the company from fellow greenhorns to some of the best wrestlers in the world. And it's not like stardom can accomplish this because they have more dates than AW. In fact, AW in 2022 had double the amount of stardom shows. And now we're getting collision on top of that. But I should walk one thing back. I'm not advocating that the women in AW need to wrestle 100 plus matches per year, nor do they need to. We are, however, seeing already signs that additional AEW house rules events are yielding great results simply by having women wrestle each other beforehand instead of touching for the first time on a dynamite. 
Anna Jay just had, in my opinion, her best match in AW against Chris Statlander on Dynamite. And my hunch is that's in large part due to them actually getting to touch for the first time days earlier on a house show. Sky Blue really showed out in her match on Dynamite against Tony Storm. And oh, by the way, they've wrestled each other three times recently on house shows. Now, sure, AW could just keep moving forward in this direction using these house rule shows, but with the women's trios division, you can obscure a lot more of these practice dry runs in the body of these multi-woman matches. And unlike in singles matches where you may not get to work in your big spots because doing so would necessitate you winning the match, in many trios matches it's commonplace for everyone to hit their big spots because it doesn't have to figure into the finish of the match. If you're still not convinced that an AEW trios division is the way to go over a tag team division, I just wanna delve back into my original piece where I say that this division would be a differentiator from WWE and Impact. And I actually wanna double down on that take by adding that more importantly, I just don't feel AEW is equipped to book a strong women's tag division, nor should it strive to. Unlike in men's tag team wrestling, you can't just sign a bunch of teams like the Young Bucks, FTR, Lucha Bros, and the list goes on and on. And while there's nothing wrong with two single stars coming together to form a tag team, like Omega and Hangman were unreal, and Swerve and Our Glory were great as well. But a tag team division feels hollow when that's every team. There are equal parts prestige and baggage when it comes to tag team wrestling. And because of that, tag team divisions can often struggle to feel relevant and important. Women's divisions know that feeling all too well. And women's tag team divisions, I argue that any promotion to book one well would be doing it for the first time. And as great and hot as AW crowds typically are, I don't think I'm out of line in saying that they might not be at their hottest for what they perceive to be two unestablished tag teams of singles wrestlers who were arbitrarily thrown together, cutting the ring in half and isolating the opponents from their corner. You'd risk some deafening silence during those long sustained heat building sequences. And from there, the narrative would be that Women's tag team wrestling just isn't getting over an AEW. And it's just a downward spiral from there. This is my worry, anyway. But as I said in my October 2022 article, I think that an AEW women's trios division has the potential to be a hot property akin to WCW's focus on the luchadors in the late 90s. If AEW fans know that a women's trios match means that they're about to see six women have a fun, action-packed, chaotic sprint where they hit all their big spots, they will start to anticipate those matches. And knowing AEW fans, they might even get a little smug about it online. I really do think that a women's trios division could be the turning point in speeding up the development and raising the profile of the AEW women's division. And whereas I feel like a women's tag team division would get bogged down in the baggage of fans pondering if it's stronger than WWE's tag team division or whether the women's tag team division feels important, I think we all kind of get that a women's trios division ultimately serves a different purpose which is developing tomorrow's single stars. Oh, and one last thing. In the same way that Stardom's trios belts, which are called the Artists of Stardom Championship, by the way, in the same way that they have three different colors for their belts, AW should steal that by having a red, white, and a blue belt, as in my image. But what do you think? You can scream at me in the comments below, or on Twitter at aw underscore one, that's spelled O-N-E. Thanks for watching, and as always, make sure you tell the women in your life how much you appreciate them.